We're doing a haircut. Oh, a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> I came in the other day and I was asking Kendra, so where can I go to get a haircut? And she's, she's like, I'll do it. All right, can we see Kendra? There you are. All right, Kendra, what do you think? Oh, what here, let me do this. What are you gonna do? Uh, Just start hacking? Start taking some off the sides and then we'll see. I'm not gonna start too short. Good luck. Looking good. Does it look good? Yeah. Feels good. So you just taught yourself how to cut hair? Yeah, I've done it a few times. I started looking up videos on YouTube. And it's just something you said your your dad, your father-in-law? No, sorry, your your uh, stepdad needed yeah. his hair cut during COVID? Yep. I cut his hair, I cut my ex's hair. Yeah. Cut my own hair. I would still like to know how you cut your own hair. But it looks it good. Is. Compliments to you. Thank you. This time I actually got it done. Uh, so Kendra, you were also telling me while I was while you're cutting my hair about your heritage here in Point Roberts. Maybe tell everybody what uh, what you told me. Like how long have you been here? I'm sixth generation here. So my family was the second and seventeenth settlers. From Icelandic heritage? Yeah. That's my the... grandma's dad was born in a house on the point. Right. Your grandma's dad. Yeah, that's one thing about Point Roberts, hey, I didn't realize is there's a cemetery up the road and it's just, like I didn't realize it had such a strong Icelandic connection. Oh, yeah. Like the president of Iceland was here in the 80s, right? I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, where did I see that? Uh, maybe it was at the history, uh, like at the museum there, community center. 1988. When were you born? 96. <laughs> You're the same age as my son. Okay, so you can be forgiven for not knowing that the president of Iceland was here. All right, what do you think? Kendra, are you happy? I'm happy, are you happy? I, I can't tell, it <laughs> feels good. It feels good, I feel itchy. I bet you had a lot of hair. <laughs> We'll get the vacuum out. Thank you so much for doing this, Kendra. No problem. Everybody on YouTube was asking to meet some of the characters that are in my life. And uh, yeah, you guys here at the Marine office, you and Martha and Deborah are absolutely part of my life now. So it's wonderful to have new friends like you. So thank you for this. Well, thank you. So hopefully it's not too windy out here. I tried to pick a spot next to the boat that is a little quieter. Um, the last month has been difficult, obviously, for obvious reasons. Those that are following the channel will know that. For those that aren't, please remember to hit the subscribe button. You can go back and look and see what's happened over the last little bit. Discovering that there was water in the oil was devastating. It was just another setback in getting out sailing, the thing that has been driving this whole process. For weeks or even a, a few months now, I had set the deadline that I wanted to be sailing by April 1st. It was just a self-imposed deadline. It, it, there's no reason uh, other than just, come on, let's get going. And, and so by setting that deadline and putting it out into the world, it created a sense of urgency, I guess. And then when I, when I, when I discovered the water and the oil, I was like, no. And then trying to get a used uh, water pump because the new ones are so expensive and, and not succeeding at that. And then finally just breaking down and, and ordering the new pump. Um, it felt a little sort of <laughs> not overwhelming because it wasn't, I'm not overwhelmed, but um, it, it certainly felt daunting. A few weeks ago, I was up top in the marina and I ran into this fellow and I can always tell when people are looking to move their boats to the marina because they're carrying around a piece of paper that they get from Martha, the manager, um, who, uh, so that they can look at available spaces. And so he was walking around, his name was Rick Cook and uh, we started chatting and um, I don't know, we just kind of hit it off with each other. And so it was a lovely surprise. 
late, or maybe it was early last week, to get a note from Rick saying, hey, let's get your boat out uh, sailing. And um, I think he had, was following the channel by then, so he knew that I wanted to get the boat out by April 1st. And uh, so he, he came down from Vancouver where his boat is, and he made a specific point of coming to help me get the boat out sailing. And so I'm really grateful for that, Rick. Thank you so much for that. It was, uh, it was really a neat experience to spend that very first day with you, and, I, and I'm very appreciative of that. Now let's get to the sailing. You can see Rick and I right from the start where he shows up at the boat, and uh, we go through kind of the whole process, and we actually go out sailing. So it was a special day. So what were you saying, Rick, about my sails there? Um, what I've been told, or my experience, is if the sail is crunchy, it means the fabric is still in good shape. It will hold its shape. And so that looks good to you? It feels good, sounds good. That's I know okay. it looks good. I just got some dirt and stuff on it, which you might be able to, to clean out, but uh, no, the sail, the sail looks good. Your lines are a little a little dirty, so they're going to be a bit stiff running through the uh, the pulleys and blocks. But um, as we were talking about, cleaning them is is not a big dog job. We're just here in the marina. Um, Rick has joined me. He has a boat up in the Fraser River and uh, has moved and is living on his boat. Uh, he's moved here from Ontario, so he's offered to come for the day to help me try to get it out to sail. Um, so we're just going over all of the things that Rick has learned about rigging and sails and ropes, lines, different things. We're just going over the boat, making sure that it's capable of sailing. Um, and then I think the plan is to try to lash the, the uh, tender to the side of the boat, get it out of the marina, uh, and go for a sail. Is that, the, is that what you're thinking, Rick? That's what I'm hoping, yeah. The wind is, is light enough that I think we'll be okay running the, uh, the tender. Um, and there shouldn't be too much current, but that'll be the first thing we check when we get out there is okay. which way the current's going and right. we'll sail against it just in case we have a problem and yeah, because <laughs> we don't want to try and fight the current with the dinghy. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay. Good plan. One of the things I was saying to you, Rick, was, you know, how I'm a little nervous, I guess is the word, because people keep telling me things like, like sailing on the west coast the inside passage around vancouver island is very challenging with the currents especially along with all the other conditions that come along with sailing so what did you just say to me i thought that was interesting <laughs> yeah one of the things that when people know i was coming out here and or got out here and that i was a new sailor one of the things that i've heard a lot is the most dangerous thing on a sailboat is a schedule um, because people will push the envelope they'll they won't pay attention to the weather window or they'll come up to active pass and say oh well the current's only three and a half it should be fine um, not realizing that active pass is is uh, I haven't gone through it because I'm, I'm afraid of it to be honest really because it's it's powerful there's warnings right on the chart and stuff so people will do things that they might not have if they didn't have a schedule they would have said oh you know what we'll wait the two hours and we'll go at slack um, or we'll wait till the wind dies down before we head out. Okay, so explain to me though, why is that current dangerous? I mean, it's obvious that if you're sailing on a river, you're gonna go, it's gonna be difficult to sail upstream. And so I get that, but what, tell me what, what's dangerous about going through active passage? So active pass, there's a couple factors. One is the ferries run through there. Right. Um, and it's not particularly wide, especially when one of those massive ferries comes through. But um, there's eddies and mm. they can be quite violent. So. If you have white water experience, you know what an eddy is. Yeah. Um, and when you're on top of the water, it's one thing, but when you're in the water and you hit an eddy line, it will it can grab your boat and throw it around. Um, a sailor that uh, him and his wife basically have enough miles to have circ circumnavigated, I think three times, twice anyway. And he got caught, hit an eddy line, and it laid his 45 foot boat on its side instantly and then spun it around three times and spit it out. This is a 23,000 pound boat. And uh, so the the eddy line, the currents are running in two different directions. And if you hit that at an angle, it will throw your boat around. The, the pressure okay. 
So, so let's that's, not go through active passage that anytime is, that soon. That's why. Yeah. So yeah, I'll go the extra couple hours and go up to Porlier Pass. Okay. Um, which actually moves faster. Well, so but it's a different different shape of water. You can get okay. through it easier. See, these are the things though that how do how do I learn all of these little nuances? Like, how did you learn them? Um, some of it, a lot of it was Facebook, just reading different groups. Um, talking to local sailors. Um, I'm at Shelter Marine, and uh, and there's a lot of people there, and they're usually quite happy to share knowledge. Um, and I guess just how I'm learning it today, right now with you, right? Just exactly. talking to people. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and then do a little bit of research. And, but I can show you later how you find that information, because mm -hmm. um, I, I brought some of the, the tools I use for navigating, and oh, I'll cool. share that with you, and, and uh, they're the tools I use. Outside the shrouds. So with the sheet being inside the shrouds, um, right. that would probably work for trying to head tight upwind. I don't know that we're going to try and push that far upwind, so I want to put them out because that'll allow the sail to come up further. Right. Otherwise, it has to stay inside these. Right. Helping a new friend out, John. And uh, trying to get his boat out, but we've had some issues with. The auxiliary engine is not running, there's a water pump issue. So I suggested we try the dinghy. We tried tying it amidship, but I suggested we tie to the stern cleat, which ended up just twisting the boat. So John just hooked up at the bow and towing us out. And that seems to be working well. Of course, we're still figuring it all out, but. So far, so good. The helm responds at this speed, which is good. Beautiful day here in Point Roberts. All right, well, I should probably Pay attention to what I'm supposed to be doing. This doesn't feel sketch at all. What could go wrong? Watch the boom, it's loose. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, I'm sailing. I was about to say, John, you're sailing. <laughs> this is so cool. The tender is a hot mess, going the wrong direction. We'll fix that later. Okay, so if we can start to head that way to your starboard, yeah, I'm, sail I'm hard to is, starboard. Is going to come across. Okay. okay so we're kind of just floundering in the wind at this point. Right. Um, sometimes the boat will actually go backwards, and you spin the rudder the opposite way. Right. You can also cheat. Put the sail where you need it to grab a little wind to force the boat to go backwards. So if we are going backwards, maybe turn the helm the other way. And we'll see if we get her to come around. How fast are we going, Rick? Uh, One point four knots. Excellent. My first. I've broken the one knot barrier under we, sail. 
we would probably go a little faster if we weren't dragging our tender sideways. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we do what we have to in, to get to where we can sail. Once we get out there, we'll fix that. All right. Sail shape. I'm kind good. of off the uh, sail shape. Looks good. Yeah. Well, looks reasonable from this from an amateur perspective. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I'm uh, off my heading. So, Rick, you were telling me that the one thing we can do is you can set the sails to the wind and then just keep on that heading, or you can pick a heading and set the sails to that heading, right? Yeah, so if you're actually trying to go somewhere, say we're going to an island, and uh, we would take our heading as close to where we want to go based on what the wind allows, yep. and we would just adjust the sails to maintain that heading. If you're just trying to go out and go fast, you basically set your sail for the wind condition, I guess, and then you'll adjust your helm a little bit to keep it going. So there's no telltales. Oh, there is, yep. sort of. Yep. Um, some of the sails have telltales closer to the mast, and it'll help you figure out where the wind's running. Normally, they're on the head sails. Right. And it'll help you tell wind on either side of the sail, which helps you to figure out your, your trim and everything. But that's to worry about on another day. Cool. This is so neat. I like the uh, the here. It's really nice. Cut out, eh? Yeah. I think I'm picking up exactly what you're telling me. Um, it's just the one thing I'm curious about, though, is like, you know, to get there. Gosh, that would just be that would be two days. It seems like a long. Because you'd have way. to. I mean, we'd have to go clear across the channel almost in order to get enough distance from the point to be able to go across. Yeah, but you're running with about 40% of your power. Sure. So if we put up your big Genoa, this we would pick up and probably do three knots mm -hmm. instead of 1.4. Oh, we're up to 1.0, 1.2. 1.5. We're <coughs> nice. It makes a big difference, and it also allows you to point further upwind. The first sailing day ever of my own boat, so the wind is, is really light, sub five knots right now. But still, it's fun. Rick's teaching me lots. Right now, Rick's up front there. He's just going to put up the head sail. Um, I do find it a little intimidating. So I see what people say when, you know, you have to react quickly. So one of the things I was trying to do was to tack and the wind is so light. I just didn't have enough momentum to get the boat to come around. And so I could feel the anxiety inside me. I tried twice. And then Rick was just like, okay, well, let's just think about it for a minute. And he just went downwind and came around. And it was so much easier. Um, so that's in a light wind. I learned that's a, an acceptable way to get going the direction you want to go. Okay, so just stop it from going crazy. Um, actually, you wrap it around the winch once more. And then go up through that top section. This feels pretty cool, dude. We just kicked in the afterburners. Yeah. So you probably turn a little yeah. to port, I think. And then we'll have to adjust that where that block is. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just need to tighten this, don't I? I think I've got the block on the outside. Kind of a dream come true. Not kind of a dream. It is a dream come true. Decades I've been thinking about sailing, about having my own sailboat. It's kind of neat when you have these big life changing kind of goals uh, and then they happen, you know, the day that they happen. Like today, been thinking about having my own boat and, and learning to sail for you know, over a decade now. And so it's one thing to be living on the boat. That's fun. Um, but it's another thing to, you know, be out physically sailing in the boat. This time was with Rick, you know, teaching me some different things. And, and it was fun to just learn the basics of tacking and jiving and using the foresail and and all of these other things that we did today. Um, and so now I've got stuff to work on to go out and do myself. But um, it's just what doesn't go unnoticed with me is this sort of life-changing event that happened today. <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out sailing. Um, and now sort of is the beginning of the journey to be out practicing sailing to and then ultimately to get to different destinations and there's so much more to go so many more places to visit things to learn in sailing one day so there's plenty more to learn my first solo sail <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it was a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> 